Welcome to the Living Legacy Podcast, where we feature wealth experts, investors, and entrepreneurs as they share their inspiring journey to living their best life. Now, let's get started with the show. Hey, everybody. Brian Foucher, host of the Living Legacy Podcast, where I feature top leaders across many industries. Now, I want to give a shout out to Michael Poggi of the Millionaires Group for introducing me to our guest today. Now, I have Marcus Ogden here of Ogden Ventures. Now, if you guys don't know Marcus, he went from growing up in a single parent home to following his dream and getting drafted into the NFL in 2003. Now, overall, he played uh, for about five years as an offensive alignment with the Titans, uh, the Bills, Ravens, and Jaguars. And even during the offseason, Ogden helped train football players in Europe, both physically and mentally. And then Marcus also founded Ogden Ventures, an elite brand specializing in inspirational keynote speaking for major corporations and organizations and coaching plus consulting for business ventures and high level executives. And before we get into it, our sponsorship method here today. So this is brought to you by the Living Legacy Association. Now here at Living Legacy, our true mission is to empower clients with the knowledge, the strategies to achieve financial prosperity and purpose in their life. Now, whether you're looking to save as much as you can on taxes, maybe it's protect your current assets, creating generational legacy or whatever it is, our mission is to provide you with the strategies and the experts to help you accomplish these goals. To learn more, go to livinglegacyassociation.com. So, Marcus, I want to thank you today for being here and uh, you know sharing your message today. Thanks for having me, Brian. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today, sir? Good, man. Good. I'm really excited for this because you have a pretty interesting background from going from the NFL to entrepreneurship and what you do today. It's a really cool thing. But for those who maybe don't understand your background or what you've done, if you can go ahead and give a you know a quick synopsis about how you got your start and how you ended up found yourself in the NFL. Yeah, so I'm from Washington, D.C. Bryant, went to St. John's College High School, where Kevin Pickle's Under Armour went to, then went to Howard University on a full football scholarship. I followed my dad, who played for the Bison as well. Oh, he was one of their first uh, players to get scholarships to go to college. So going to Howard was amazing. It was only about maybe a 15-minute drive from my house. So grew up very close to my dad and went to Howard, had a lot of fun, was a four-year starter at tackle and center mainly off the tackle right and left. And I went to the Hula Bowl in 2003, January. I was coached by Mac Brown, who was at Texas at the time. Now he's at Chapel Hill, USC Chapel Hill, and played against guys from Florida State, Miami, uh, you know, uh, Carolina, you know, uh, all the big boys, you know, Boston College, Rice. And so I had a chance to showcase myself against Division I talent. And that helped me tremendously be able to get drafted to the National Football League out of Howard University. And I'm still to date, Brian, the first and only offensive lineman ever drafted from Howard University to the National Football League. That's very cool. That's a cool story. And yeah, senior, your dad and also your brother obviously is in the NFL, too. That's a, it's a cool thing for the family to be a part of that whole kind of uh, sport and that whole space. Now. I, now that's that's how you kind of got your start, but then there's a second phase to your life right now, and kind of give everybody kind of how you went from the NFL, the mindset you had there to, and what happened in the years after you left the NFL. Great question, Brian. So I struggled immensely with addiction, nightlife, gambling because I lost my father in 2006 unexpectedly. He was only 57. And I wasn't prepared for that transition. I tell people all the time, you have to transform your mindset before you transition. And I didn't do that. So I struggled immensely. And then finally, after about six months of defilement to my body and myself and my mind, I found a Caden Premier Enterprises, which was a construction company. We were a concrete uh, you know, uh, demolition, very small contractor. And then we grew from you know zero dollars to an eight figure business in less than three and a half years. And we were the largest site work contractor and minority owned in the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. But unfortunately, Brian, as the company grew, my ego did, and I became egotistical and I was became not just competent, I was confident with a huge ego, which I call egotistical. And I stopped listening to my best people. I stopped taking advice. I stopped taking guidance. And as a result of that and a really, really bad job, I ended up losing everything that I owned, right, Brian, in 2013. Home foreclosed on, both cars repossessed in the same day. 
I literally went from a eight figure a year, clearing seven figures a year from my own personal income individual to the next year in 2013, bankrupt chapter seven, the worst of the worst, broke, no home, it was foreclosed on, I couldn't pay the note, both cars repossessed in the same day. And I moved to Raleigh with $400 to my name. That's it. And that, one of the things you mentioned is the mindset. So when you were in that space and looking back, especially how important, how impactful do you believe the mindset that you had then was to that situation and also overcoming it? So to answer your first question, no, my mindset was still not strong at that time. Because yeah. at that time, right, Brian, I still blamed my business partner, my clients, my employees, everybody but me. And one of my favorite people is J.K. Rollins, who wrote Harry Potter, and she wrote it in her car. And she has a great quote, rock bottom is the moment that she rebuilt her life. And I had not hit my rock bottom moment. Even though I lost everything, no money, you think that's rock bottom, it wasn't. Rock bottom was being a custodian, taking the trash out and somebody spoiled milk, nasty, protruding garbage, horrible, stinking, rotten meat getting all over my body, my skin, and my clothes. That was my rock bottom moment, Brian. So after I did that, I cleaned up myself, sat on the curb with my head in my hands, and I cried for 10 minutes and said, oh, my God. What's going on here, Mark? You are an NFL athlete. This with this, this with that. What the hell happened to you? And I realized no accountability, no responsibility. And that was the beginning of me turning my life around. I went home and said, what can I do? Based off my three biggest strengths of being a good communicator, good storyteller, wanting to help people. I said, let's start keynote speaking. Tony Robbins did it. That's got to be awesome. Let's go that route. Start speaking, not one paid job, Brian, for two and a half years. Got wow. my first paid job in April 2016, learned the business, worked hard, developed myself, got coached. In the last seven years, Brian, we've worked for 53 Fortune 500 brands as a speaker. Countless wow. other companies, two non-for-profits, real estate, mortgages, title, tech, finance, insurance, you name, associations, you name it. And what I tell people is the following, that the mindset and the power of goal setting and visualization is the only thing that got me through. And even so, Brian, again, last year, I, am in the pro I was in the process of getting divorced, found some things out that was shocking to me. And I was trying to work it out with my spouse and with my wife. And came to realize that it wasn't going to work out. And I had to grow some, some, some moxie and say, you know what, Marcus, this is not going to change. Either you're going to stay in it and be miserable. Or you're going to get yourself out of it and get some moxie and do it. And it was scary. It was very arduous. It was long. Nice. I'm in my apartment right now. I just, I just bought a home May 15th, 2023. I had a goal, Brian, of when I was going through my divorce and moving to my apartment November 1st of last year, I said, here's the goal, Marcus. Here's what we're going to visualize. By November 1st, 2023, you got to have a house. I don't know what that was going to look like. None of that. But you got to have a house. Got to it five and a half months early. Because of mindset, because of goal setting, because of visualization, there were many nights, Brian, in this apartment, I'm like, Man, I miss my family. I miss my daughters. I miss this. And I, I miss, you know, uh, having a, a complete group of people that I, I did. All these things have been through my mind. All these things, all these things. And imposter syndrome. Are you going to get it together, Marsh? Are you going to make it back, Marsh? Are you going to be okay, Marsh? Like, can you survive on your own, Mark? I mean, all these things. Finally, finally, in January, when I realized, man, I have now had it. We have a final agreement. And if I don't get myself together right now, I'm going to always be talking to myself like this, negative Nancy, imposter syndrome, self-doubt. So January 15th, basically, of this year, I said, enough's enough. Get your mindset back in the game, Marcus. Get out of your own way. 
And since then, business has blossomed, been very fortunate. I mean, I have some amazing people in my life, right, Brian? But mindset, goal setting, visualization since January 15th of this year has allowed me now to buy a home. Now I'm out of my apartment June 15th of this year. I'm out of here. I'm, I'm in my own place. I bought a refrigerator, washer, dryer, bed, spent thousands of dollars to take care of my family, myself. I'm like, I could do it. I could do it. And mindset, goal setting, visualization, right, Brian? That's yep. the yep. only thing that allowed me to get from where I was January 15th, 2023 to now May 29th, 2023. That's amazing uh, because what you just talked about is I think one of the things that unfortunately most people in their life don't get to experience. It's that realization that your external world is a reflection of your inner world, of your inner mind. And it is something that 100% is powerful to, to realize. And yet I see so many people um, where they have a goal, they'll set a goal, and yet they don't think about it, they don't focus on it, and therefore they don't realize that goal. So. That's a huge process that I actually work on every day. I, I, I literally have right here in front of me, Marcus, this is my goal journal. I write it down every single day, multiple times, so that I'm visualizing that thing. I'm programming my subconscious self to realize that into my real life. So what's so if there's a lot of people out there that are thinking, man, this is pretty powerful. What are some things that when you were going into this uh, this change that you did to make the stuff manifest? What are some of like the things that you learned that other people are saying, man, how do I do this? So what I learned is I needed to calm my mind down and do three things, focus, lock in and attack. Focus, okay. internal cleansing of your mind, push out negative, push out darkness, push out, you know, imposter syndrome, like get focused on what you want. And again, sometimes focus means not even pushing out bad thoughts, pushing out, it could be positive thoughts that don't have anything to do with where you're trying to go. You don't want to cloud your mind with so many things, it can't focus. And that's what happens to a lot of people. Most people, Brian, are not successful because they don't focus. So I have to internally clean my mind. And that's what happened. January 15th, I said, Marcus, okay, it's final agreement. You got to go get it signed off on. We're going to have a sign, whatever that's going to be. Now you got to move. Like you can't just sit around focusing on what used to be in the past and all this other stuff because that's no longer here, right? You got a choice. Either focus on going forward or focus on the negative and going backwards. Your choice. I chose forward, right? Lock in. If it's in your mind and you can't see it, visualize it or write it down, it's just a thought. It's just a thought. It's just a wish. People have to get locked in, right? So like I said, right, Brian, I locked in on a new home, November 1st, 2022. Did I know where, how big, what I could afford? Absolutely not. But I locked in on a target. I created in my mind what I wanted. Here I am. And I beat it five and a half months early, right? So that's lock in an attack. Move forward every single day going after something that you want. Move forward an inch, a yard, a mile, a step, whatever it is, just keep going. Okay. And those three things, focusing, locking in, and attacking, had me where January 15th, right? I put a deposit on my house January 8th. January 9th or 10th, no, it was the 10th. I was like, oh my God, I have to do this and I got to do that to be able to get my house. I don't know if that's going to happen. I, mean, I don't know if I, I don't know if I have enough money. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. Like, I, I, I panicked from January 10th to January 13th. January 14th, I said, okay, Marcus, what are we going to do? January 15th, I said, all right, Marcus, enough of this BS. Let's get focused. Let's lock in. Let's attack. Once I create a plan, business has started to boom. Am I, do I work a lot? Oh, you better believe it. You better believe it. But at the end of the day, it's so important for you to understand that you as an individual, you have to focus, lock in, attack. You have to. So once I did that, I made the decision January 15th of this year. Right, Ryan? I have not looked back since. That's, I, I love this, man. This is so inspirational to me. 
because this is just something that I think a lot of people don't get to experience. And it's, it's beautiful because you had all these things happen. And I, I lost everything at one point and I stayed in that place of loss for years. And, oh man, it was painful. And it took me a long time, like you mentioned, to, to realize I'm living in the, the past. I'm living in that past pain, which means I'm bringing it to the present, which means my future is always going to be pain too. And just, ju just like a great equation by Jack Canfield, E plus R equals O. Event plus response equals outcome. You can control your behavior, your thoughts, your images. When you do not do that in a positive manner, the outcome that you desire will always be skewed, negative, or you will always come up short. It's just that simple. Yeah. Now, there's a, you, you mentioned something there that I want to kind of focus on because it's something that I had to really learn. I've always had goals. I'll set a goal that says, oh, hey, I want to pay off this debt. Hey, I have this goal of, hey, I want to get a different car. Or, hey, I have this goal of, you know, let's let's go on this little trip uh, to Alaska with our family that we've done many times before. Uh -huh. Those goals are not powerful. Those goals that I set for myself were ones that I have either done before or I knew exactly how to accomplish them because I've done them before. Therefore, they were not very motivation. Now, granted, I've, I've, I've done those things, but they're really not things that are going to make an impact in my own life or the lives of those around me. And so a lot of people, when I ask them, hey, what's your goal? What's your outcome? It's very simple. It's very basic things that really are not a purpose. It's not a passion in, a passion or anything in their lives. So if someone is sitting here saying, hey, Marcus, this is, this is awesome, but how do, I, how do I come up with that goal that's really going to motivate me? And I call them, if you study uh, Bob Proctor's type C goals, they're goals that you don't know how you accomplish it, and you should not be focusing on how. It's the, the goal itself. The how will come. So what's your thoughts on that? I tell people, focus on the why, right? Yeah. Focus on why you want to do something. Because if you're having trouble with who you are, always go back to your why. So like me, when I was struggling from January 10th to the 14th, right? I didn't know, I, for, I forgot who I was. I'm now divorced. I'm now having my kids have the time. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, right? All these things, right? That is not who I used to be. So I didn't know who I was, right, Brian? So what I did is I went back to the why of why I do what I do business-wise and client-wise and speaking-wise and trying to leave a legacy for people and trying to make my dad proud who's been gone since 2006 and trying to make my family proud and provide a life for my daughter and my stepdaughter and all these things, right? That why took me back to, okay, now, Marks, this is who you are now. You are a single man that co-parents. You have two amazing daughters. You have a phenomenal team that loves you. You have clients that love you. Don't let this become who you are because of something that you cannot control. And once I really got back to the why in which I do things work-wise, passion-wise, want to leave an impact, help many people as I can, get my message out through books or a podcast or my podcast or speaking or coaching, consulting, whatever. That's when the 15th said, okay, Marcus, now we're talking. Now you have the, the fuel in the tank. Now you got to drive. Kids have fuel in the tank and sit in the, in, the, in the lot or keep it in the garage. That's not going to get you anywhere because you can't get the house you want by May if you don't drive on the road. You can't pay this debt off if you don't go drive on the road. You can't try to move things and get things happening for others and people and around you and create this legacy for your, your daughters, your dad, your family, your grandparents, if you don't drive. So I fueled my paint. January 15th, I said, let's open the garage, let's turn the key in the ignition, and let's drive. And here we are. I love that. Because that's one of the things in my own personal journey was finding my why was a challenge. It was always a challenge. Why am I doing this? What's my purpose? That kind of stuff. So, and I've come across a lot of individuals who have that same kind of challenge. Like, what is my why though? I, 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 how do I find it? How do I identify it? And how do I find that they'll, they'll come up with a why, but usually it's, it's basic, it's simple because it's an external influenced why. It's not coming from in here, it's coming from the outside. So what, what would be a process for someone who's challenged on, on finding their why? What would, what would be some things they could do to really... Go through what I call the fulfillment perspective process. 
Figure out what internal values that you have, right? And then create an alignment with your external, what you're doing, and then you become fulfilled, right? So for example, I, this is a success perspective and a fulfillment perspective. Success perspective is doing things to pay the bills, take care of your family, have a nice car, house, great, right? And that's nothing wrong with that, right? As long as you don't have an ego, nothing wrong with that. There is one issue with that though. If you're not passionate about what you do, you will burn out. Take my construction company, right, Brian? I made yeah. millions of dollars. I was a seven-figure year earner. Burned out. Why? I chased money, fame, notoriety, success with the construction company. And when I got it, it wasn't sustainable. Now, with speaking, started in 2013, September, two and a half years, not one paid job. Not one. Got our first paid job, April 2016. I was always fulfilled in my quest to speak, always, which is why even though I didn't get paid for it, it was hard, nobody hired me, I never ever gave up. So if you're listening right now, go sit down and do what's called the fulfillment perspective process. Three things that internally you value and are important to you. Okay, then compute what can you do externally that matches with your internal. Once you are fulfilled, start on that journey and 99.9% of the time, no matter what you go through, you won't burn out. Like I didn't burn out when I didn't get hired for speaking, coaching, all that. I mean, I started a coaching business in 2017 or 2016. It failed, shut it down, came back 2018, relaunched it was successful, right? Didn't, I got a paid speaking job in 2016. That was great. Awesome. Fifteen hundred dollars Loved it. Didn't get paid again until 2017, right? And I kept going, kept going, right? So again, wow. if you're struggling, figure out what you are fulfilled by and then tie that in, what you can do on the outside. Now you're cooking with grease. I love that. That is amazing right there because that is something that I think is, missing in so many people's lives. Now, one thing uh, is about purpose. Um, one of my big challenges was always finding like, what, what's my purpose? And that, how does that tie into like your why? Or, or for you, is this, is your purpose, you're also your why? Is it kind of the same thing? The same thing, but your purpose is what you're doing. It's like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, your why is like what drives you. Your purpose is to me, what you do to help give on to others. So my per so my why is to is to really just impact people's lives. My purpose is to speak or coach or consult or be an author or be a business owner or a brand ambassador for people to succeed where I fail. So my purposes are in a why are, are very close to kind of like first cousins, but I'm my purpose is to enlighten people and enrich people's lives. So they do not end up failing and, and having the same hardships that I did. Yeah. And I, I, what you just said right there to me is so freaking important because I have heard so many people, their why and purpose are the same thing or they get them backwards. And so what I think what you said right there is, is pretty powerful for me. Like I have had to realize that my purpose is, has to be about leading people to I'm leading in some way. That's my purpose. And for a lot of people, that's their purpose too. The why is more personal sometimes for me. It's a more personal thing. Where right. my so wife. I'm a person, I'm a person of faith. So to me, Jesus's why was to come down and represent a positive, holy perspective in the world. That's to me his why. His purpose was to lead us, man, who were sinners, mistake makers to the best path possible to take us to the best road possible of life. So his why to me was to come down and try to just be a positive, holy presence as the son of God, right? But mm -hmm. the purpose was to come and lead God's people who were not perfect, who were sinners, who made mistakes to a better opportunity, right? Again, your purpose doesn't mean everybody's going to follow you. You would love that to happen if it's a good purpose, right? Which most time people choose to have that in their mindset. But it's all about the effort. It's all about the attempt. It's all about the digging in, getting your 
elbows dirty, hands dirty, boots dirty, and say, hey, I'm going to do the best I can to lead you from A to A to Z. Whether you follow me or not, I can't make you do that. I, all the time. I can tell you, I, I tell people all the time, I can't take you from where you are, where you want to be. I can show you the way. I, that's my purpose. But your why has to want to lead you from, from the dark to the light. You don't want to do it. You don't want to embark on it. I'm not the coach for you. I'm not the consultant for you. I'm not the speaker for you because that's just, it's just not going to work out. Yeah, that's, that's a powerful one right there. And what you said about the spirituality and the you know, person of faith really to me is very important as well, because like my own personal belief is that we are here to find our purpose uh -huh. and experience that purpose so that we can actually find that connection back to our, our origin or our, you know, where we came from and to do uh -huh. that, your why and purpose. Like that's why. And I think so many people get stuck in a loop because they're not doing that. And it repeats. If you believe in that kind of stuff, it repeats and repeats and repeats until you finally find that thing. And that's how we identify who we truly are and why we're here. And I think it's one of the greatest things and journeys we can go on is to experience our, our purpose. Like find that thing is why we're here. And man, have you ever heard someone say that on their, they're close to their deathbed and they're saying, man, I wish, I wish I had yep. done I wish I had done that. I wish I had done that. I regret not doing this. I regret not doing that. You got it. That's yeah. the classic line of most people because they regret never trying to live and or fulfill their why and or their purpose. Yeah. And so I, to me, that's that part of my big purpose of why is helping people do what that right there is truly to find that. And so that is that's beautiful, man, because I'm still on that journey and I got into it late in life, kind of think, kind of like you did too. I had to go through a lot of pain to realize that. Like, oh, okay. And I'm still on that, that journey to this day and never will stop. That's the cool thing. No, nope. never, never, nope, you should never have a finish line in life because it's always ongoing. You got it. Yeah. Like retirement. Like, I don't talk about retirement because, well, retirement is like the finish line. No, that, 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 that does not exist for me. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. Like for me, it's same. Like, yeah. Same here. Yeah. You can retire, but guess what? Retire to something better. Retire to something bigger. Retire to something more powerful. What's the impact you're going to make? Like, to me, that is just glorious. That's gold. That's gold. That's yep. gold. Yeah. And then, you know, when I go to like a lot of these mastermind groups that uh, I'm a part of now versus when I was, by the way, I got my start in, in life in construction. I worked for a Turner Construction, one of the biggest commercial contractors in the U.S. for uh, I know. I know. Years. I know. I know who Turner is. I'll tell you something about them. I know exactly who Turner is. Yeah. So I worked for them for a long time. And uh, I, was, I worked in that industry for 12 years and was never fulfilled. Didn't like it, was never happy because I was doing what I was told to do, I guess I would say, in life. And I got out of that whole thing and spent basically five years in turmoil, just like you talked about, because of not finding that purpose. And now that I have, you know, I'm, I'm getting on that path, it's, it's energizing. The, the things that happen... <laughs> Guess what? They're just part of that journey. And I, you know, you don't focus on them, focus on where you're going and why. So that's very powerful. So, so kind of so give us a kind of a, what are you doing right now? Kind of what's your focus right now? I mean, you 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 hinted on it a little bit ago, but what does a uh, Ogden Ventures do? So we are a breakthrough specialist and mentor. We help clients do keynote speaking, business coaching, business consulting. We have a podcast ranked in the top 1% in the world called Get Authentic with Marcus Ogden. We're loving that. People are loving our content. We have a, a, a list of amazing sponsors. I own parts of different businesses that align with our brand. I'm also a brand ambassador. And again, we are a breakthrough specialist and mentor that helps people fulfill and achieve massive breakthroughs in their personal and or their professional lives. And we do that through, again, the speaking, coaching, consulting, our podcast. Those are different ways which we help our clients achieve and uh, really maximize their goals and their objectives. That's a, that's a beautiful, that, that is a, it's interesting. What you are speaking right there is not really about what you do, but it's the impact you do. And to me, that's where I think a lot of people are, are missing that and just in their business too, because I didn't have that in mind for many years. So one last thing I want to want to touch on real quick. So how important do you think this stuff is right now, given the current state of the economy and the markets and the, the mindset of the, the mass? It, it, it is everything because if you don't have the proper mindset, you're not going to go or you're not going to make it through all of the craziness, the turmoil, the back and forth, uh, this, the, that, the media, the scare tactics. Like you're just going to focus on what I call the negative and you're going to buy into the narrative and you're not going to focus on you and your positive mindset and your outcome. And people still want to do business today. 
but you have to bring exceptional value. And when they have a problem, you have to solve it to the utmost ability where they can rectify their issue and they can turn and make revenue and profit off you solving their problems. Makes sense. I love that. You know, one of the things I'm seeing right now uh, is that there's this concept that I have about where when you have a, a group of people to get together with the same mindset, it's like a, it's a hive mind, right? And so I'm seeing that a lot like in social media and that kind of stuff. And like my thing, and I talk to people says, you've got to unplug from that, that mindset because it's going to influence you. It's going to impact you if you focus on stuff. And so what are some things that uh, if someone's saying, man, I, I, all this negativity, I'm, I'm thinking all these negative thoughts that they could do to really start to protect their mind and protect their focus and their, and their mindset. Real simple. Choose who you hang around and choose the content you consume. Who you hang around and what you consume becomes you. So if you want to be full of negative or self-doubt or all that, be around negative people and consume content that's very much negative or Debbie Downer. If you want to have positive mindset and good thoughts, consume good content. That's why our show is doing so well, Brian. It's all about positive thoughts in that, in, in that regard. That's all it's about. So that's what's turning our our, our tribe or community into a very, very positive outlook going forward. I love that. That's beautiful, man. So uh, if someone wants to learn more about you or follow you, where would they go? Go to our website, www.marcus, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N.com and connect with us or email me at marcus at marcusogden.com. We love to speak with you or have your next speaking event or your next opportunity. We just want to have a conversation. Reach out to us and we'd love to speak with you. Sounds good, man. We'll put that link below. Uh, Marcus, I appreciate your time, man. That was amazing. Thanks for having me on, brother. Thanks for listening to the Living Legacy Podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.